Un, dos, tres, cuatro. The castle-filled hills and charming towns in Ribera de Duero are a wine lover's dream. Often referred to as the Napa of Spain, Ribera de Duero is one of the country's top wine regions. Located just a two hours drive from Madrid, you'll find over 300 wineries and more than 25 Michelin-rated restaurants to indulge in. This week, we will explore the rich history and art of winemaking in Ribera de Duero while savoring a variety of delicious wines. So pour yourself a glass of vino and get ready to discover why a visit to Spain's finest wine region is a must on your next Spain vacation. We're starting our time in Ribero de Duero at Convento de Oreja. This is a winery that is partially owned by my friend Mary Path. It has a very funny name, the Convento de Oreja, which Oreja means ear. But its history dates back to the 11th century. There was a pueblo called Langayo, which is about seven kilometers from here, and it had a convent. Its name was Convento de Oreja. Eventually, in the 15th century, the convent was torn down, and they used it to build a convent in Penafiel, which is the town we're staying in. They ended up finding out that it had winemaking in its history, so it kind of had like a really Really special meaning from it. it. Represented their hometown, it represented the part of history of Spain, and it also represented the winemaking in this region, which dates back centuries. So I think it's the perfect place for us to start our wine tasting experience. We're going to be meeting with Antonio, who's going to be showing us around the bodega and explaining the winemaking process. Ribera de Duero is situated in the heart of Castilla Leon in northwest Spain. It spans approximately 115 kilometers from east to west and boasts nearly 22,500 hectares of vineyards. One of the main factors behind the outstanding quality of Ribera de Duero wine is its extreme climate. Due to the region's high elevation, warm days are followed by very cold nights, resulting in temperature swings of 20 degrees or more within a single day. Coupled with the presence of old vines from centuries of winemaking and mineral-rich soil, this creates an ideal environment for producing acidic and well-balanced red wines from grapes such as Tempranillo, Merlot, Syrah, and Cabernet. However, it's the Tempranillo grape that is famous in this region. To receive the denomination stamp for Ribeiro de Duero, a wine must be at least 75% Tempranillo. The remaining portion can be mixed with other varietals like Merlot, Syrah, and Cabernet. However, most vineyards, including Convento Oreja, produce 100% Tempranillo wine. Antonio explained Convento Oreja's process of making wine. It starts with the harvesting of grapes each September. The grapes are separated on a machine and then sent to fermentation tanks, where they will ferment in their own sugars for approximately seven to eight days. Three times a day, the water is drained from the bottom of the tank and redistributed on top to extract both color and nutrients from the grape skins that float on the top of the tank. This is a major distinction from white wine and is the reason red wine is considered healthy and has that beautiful, deep, rich color. Next, the wine undergoes malolactic fermentation, which enhances its stability and smoothness. This process takes around 10 days of fermentation, and then after, the wine is sent to age in barrels. You huele buenísimo. <laughs> <laughs> I wish you could smell this. It smells so lovely in here. It really does. Oh my gosh. Why do we use barrels to, to, to mature the wines? Because we are looking for balance the wines through an evolution. The wine is still alive. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we export our wines to 10 or 12 countries in the, oh, in the wow. world. Yeah. We are selling uh, Conventoreja wines in Puerto Rico, Mexico, Brazil, and Canada hmm. at this moment. Oh, wow. So, and we are uh, seeking for distribution in the US. So, if you're yeah. watching and you're a distributor, so, call me. <laughs> give them a shout. <laughs> Our Convento Oreja Roble for six months in oak, 2022 harvest, and it is our young wine. It's more important to transmit the fruit of the Tempranillo grapes in our region than to transmit the, the tannins of the barrels of the wood. The real story is, uh, is, the, is the Tempranillo fruit. I call this wine as a spring wine. Mm -hmm. It is an explosive wine with well, all the red fruit in the second wine, mm -hmm. the crianza, more dark mm -hmm. red than in the joven. That means that it has been evolving in the barrel and also in the, in the bottle. Whoa, totally different. Mm -hmm. So this is uh, our Reserva mm -hmm. Memoria 2018. Mm -hmm. So it's compota, oh. marmalade. Me encanta. <laughs> <laughs> Puedo tomar esto cada día. 
One thing we've learned from not only this wine tasting, but learning more about wine in all of the regions we visited is how important it is for the year of harvest. I think a lot of wine drinkers who aren't so familiar with the winemaking process think like the older the wine is, the better it is, just because it's aged longer and it's more mature. But that's not necessarily true. It's so regional dependent. So for example, in Willamette Valley, if they had some crazy hailstorm that ruined the grapes in 2019, you don't want a wine from that year because it's not gonna be as good quality. But maybe um, 2019 in Ribera del Duero was a fantastic year. They had good rains, it was, you know, nice fluctuations in the weather, so it just created a really quality grape. And also it's so subjective, like just because I like it from that year doesn't mean you will. And I think that's a really beautiful thing. Once you start to really get into the wine world, you really have to know what happened in that area that year as you're trying things. The best way to get around Rivetto de Duero is with a car, since most vineyards are a 10 to 15 minute drive from each other. Penafiel is a great place to stay located in the heart of Rivetto wine region. This town's famous for its medieval castle, which is stunning, and is home to the world-renowned bodega Protos. However, if you're short on time, you can take a day trip from Madrid on a guided tour. We'll have a link to book that tour down below. But today we came to Pesquera de Duero, which is about a 10 minute drive from Penafiel, and it's kind of like a hub for a lot of the big wineries. This is where you'll find Emilio Moro. It's also where you'll find Tinta Pesquera, two of the most popular bodegas to visit in this region. But I highly, highly, highly recommend visiting some of these smaller bodegas. We are headed to Bodega Ascension Repiso Bocos, also known as Veronica Salgado. It is a family run ecological winery. I'm really, really excited about it. It has fantastic reviews online, even though it's like a really Really small, not so well known winery. Reservations are required for most winery visits in Ribeiro de Duero. Typically, these tours involve a visit to the bodega and an explanation of the winemaking process, followed by a tasting of three to four wines. At Veronica Salgado, the tour and tasting were provided free of charge at the time we visited, but most wineries charge 15 euros or more for a tasting. Veronica herself conducted the tour, providing insights into the attention and care given to the harvesting, production, and aging of their wines. It was fascinating to learn about the differences in winemaking approaches between small-scale wineries like Bodega Ascension and larger establishments. I do love that this one is ecological, like they don't add sulfites and all the additives that are often found in wines, and they take a more holistic approach in growing the vines as well. I love, love, love that. to do it twice, you're not allowed to ta give tasting notes on the first sip. It's smoother, it doesn't have as much tannin, which is that like kind of puckering taste you get at the back of your mouth when you're drinking wine. It's super soft, you have like a really nice mouthfeel the whole time. This is really good. So 12 months in the barrel for this one and then two and a half years in the bottle. Very good, <laughs> very good. We came to Tinto de Pesquera and already the winery is so different from the small bodegas we've tried. It's, it's very grand and beautiful. They have a very special room just for the tasting. I think this is more in line with like wineries we've tried in other wine regions. But Tinto Pesquera has four different brands under the family run bodegas. They're now on the third generation of winemakers. And they're all ladies. How cool is that? They didn't have any sons. I don't think it's like a discrimination thing here. It's just what they got in the family. <laughs> We've tried Tinto Pesquera wine before. This is a friend of the family's, Tonio. He works here as a part of this bodega, and so we've had the wine many, many times. It's delicious. So this time we are trying all of the different brands that we haven't tried under the Tinto Pesquera umbrella. We've had La Granja, but this one's from Zamora. It's a Crianza. This one's from 2019. Another Crianza, but this one's from Ribeiro de Duero. And the brand for this one is Condado de Aza. We're also trying two Reservas and one Grand Reserva. The Grand Reserva has been in the barrel for 30 months in French oak. The other ones have been there anywhere from 18 to 24 months. They also have two to three years that they're aging in the bottle as well. Grand Reserves are like the top, top notch for what you can try here in the area. Hoven is the youngest and the least aged, so it's not necessarily bad, it's just different. Different. A lot of powder in this one. I feel like I'm such a fraud when I do this. I don't know if you feel like this when you do wine tastings, but I don't think I have enough of the vocabulary to describe what I'm experiencing, and so it makes me feel like I'm pretending. 
way more floral. Mm -hmm. I get like a little bit of rose in there. Every single place you go to if you're visiting Spain will have a Rioja wine and a Ribera de Duero wine. So the chances are you can try a lot of these wines just going to restaurants, especially if you're visiting like Barcelona or Madrid, for example, because these are the two biggest wine regions in all of Spain. I do recommend coming here because it's a totally different experience getting to visit them. And there's no chance you'd be able to try the wines from those small wineries just at restaurants. Today we came to Bodega Sarmentero, which was about an eight minute drive from Penafiel. It's a super small winery. This was another recommendation from our friend who lives in Penafiel, who has visited almost all of the bodegas at this point. And he says he loves this spot. We'll have a blog post with all of the information that you need about visiting this region, because we're not gonna be able to show them all to you. And we have many family and friends who live here that have given us tons of recommendations for future visits. So we'll be sharing those with a link down below. It's super interesting how regulated it is for a wine here in this region. They do grow Verdejo grapes, which is a type of white varietal, but you can't have the label from Ribera de Duero. So this grape is grown about 30 minutes outside of here. It's supposed to have like lots of tropical citrus notes in it. It's done in a stainless steel tank. So it's like really crisp and clean, but very good. This is also an ecological winery. They don't have the official label, but they are growing naturally and they're using natural fermentation. This is an unoaked Tempranillo, which is not common for this area. Most wine Makers always put the Tempranillo grapes into the barrel to age for even just three months. It's gonna be an explosion of fruit, she said. And it's also gonna be a very bold body. I'm into this. Not only do we get to try the unoaked, which is like the base iteration of flavor that leads you into the five month and the 12 month oak aged. We get to try them all. Wow, crazy different. You can definitely tell it's the same grape, same terroir, same winemaker. But this is fun because it's something you've never had before. This is tasty because it's done super well. And this is for like the sophisticated palate because it's a bit more dry, a bit more alcohol. A bit more complex. A bit more complex all around. All of them stellar. I can't decide which one I like more.